Come raise up, fellow Australians. With God's grace, with your individual assistance and understanding, and with humility and sincere appreciation, the task of appointing my running mate and our vice president to be, as well as putting together a national campaign management structure, is now complete. To our former chairman and leader, and former president of the Republic, His Excellency Dr. Anis Bay Kuruma. To our newly elected chairman of the party, Al Haji Mikailu Mansare. And his deputy chairman, Al Haji Dr. Usman Fode Yansane. To our new Secretary General, Lawyer Lansana Dumuya, Esquire. To all my fellow comrades who contested for various positions at the McKinney Convention. To my colleague flag bearer aspirants. To all delegates and well wishers of the party. And finally, to all my fellow citizens of this great nation and our development partners. With profound gratitude and great humility, I thank you for granting me the opportunity for the second time to serve as flag bearer and presidential candidate of the mighty All People's Congress Party for the forthcoming June 24, 2023 presidential and general elections. I am for the humbled to serve for the first time in my political career within the All People's Congress Party as the national leader of the party in accordance with our new party constitution. I am most honored to have been surrounded in the city of McKinney by many of you who had worked so tirelessly to make this incredible flag bearer, national officers, and lower level campaigns, and the National Party Convention itself, a mighty success, at the end of which we celebrated a resounding triumphant return to our historic capital city, Freetown. Come result, our journey was long and now right challenge. There were times when, due to the pressures from all sides, we felt like throwing our arms up in the air, throwing down the tower and calling it quits. But to the glory of the Father Almighty, we never did, and hence we are able to reach thus far in our epic journey to State House come June 24, 2023. Comrades, the final lag is now upon us. And just as I stated in declaring my candidature prior to the convention in McKinney, my will and determination to keep on fighting to take back our Sierra Leone and to overhaul, reconstruct, and rebuild its economic, social, and political landscape with the overarching goal to end our excruciating pains and unbearable sufferings, which we have endured over the past 60 years or so, but especially during the last four to five years, since 2018, has not and will never be daunted. And I can safely vouch that your own will and determination as well will always not be daunted. For the incredible successes we have achieved, I sincerely want to thank each and every one of you once again for your hard work, dedication, and trust in me. Whether you were out knocking on doors, making telephone calls, 
or spreading the word on social media, in churches and in mosques, in towns and in villages around the country. You all were instrumental in making my personal campaign a success and a win-win for all, both in our party and in the country at large. Your enthusiasm, energy, and commitment to our cause, to rescue, take back, and rebuild our country, as well as end the suffering of the vast majority of our people, have been inspiring. You have worked long hours, put in extra effort, and made incredible sacrifices to ensure that your message to put back the APC in national governance was heard. You have gone above and beyond duty in every way. And for that, I am truly grateful. It is important to recall here that we run our respective campaigns on several themes derived from and based on a thorough review and analysis of where our country has come from, where we are today, and where we want to dream to be in the next five years and beyond. On the threshold of the June 24 general and presidential elections lies the difficult economic, political, and social context we have a fledgling economy. We are confronted with a worsening cost of living crisis in which the prices of all goods and services continue to rise uncontrollably and at a pace that is much faster than our household incomes. The purchasing power value of our loan currency is in free fall as if we have no finance ministry or a central bank. There is a deliberately manicured dissipation of our individual freedoms and justice by the government. And we have experienced several unexplained, uninvestigated, and unregretted extrajudicial killings, which have added to our economic hardship, causing deeper pain and misery, especially for the most vulnerable in our society. In sum, we are being forced in our throats and intelligence an explosive list of imaginary and paper achievements by the current regime. Let it be reiterated that the opposition as well as many of the poor and vulnerable in our society, have severally and constantly challenged this government on grounds of unconstitutionality, violations of human rights, and a shrinking democratic space. We are also going to the 2023 elections within heightened social tension, hidden anger, and gross dissatisfaction driven by politically orchestrated breaches of social contracts and the rule of law, compounded by a show of heavy-handedness at all times by the security apparatus, even against peaceful civilian protests. With this background, and as valiant citizens across the country, we have solemnly called upon this year to take one of the most momentous and seminal decisions in the history of our party and of the country at large. On June 24, 2023, we will be deciding by popular vote whether or not we want to save Sierra Leone from bondage. We will have to decide further by popular vote whether we want to continue with a failed and repressive powerful government that is totally and painfully disconnected from realities on the ground, or to reject this regime and bring back into proven governance 
a caring APC government that will govern with a human face, that has a leadership led by Samura Matthew Wilson Kamara that will listen and humble itself to its people. A leadership that will commit itself to restore our pride, our sense of purpose, and our lost glory. A visionary and accountable leadership that will work assiduously to revive and take to a whole new level our ambition and desire for national peace, national cohesion, and sustainable development and prosperity. Most important, we shall be voting on June 24, 2023 to proudly make ourselves historically relevant and legitimate in effecting a fundamental shift in our history to a whole new era of designing and effecting pathfinders for building lasting peace, just an inclusive society. Once again, I want to appeal to your collective conscience of the common good and a treason. Because throughout my campaign as flag bearer aspirant, we who have openly contested for these and other positions in the party have followed our personal motivations and reasons for contesting. However, as I stated in my declaration in McCain, that competition itself was an outward manifestation of the advent of a new spirit of democracy in the APC, rooted in our 2022 party constitution. No doubt, the transition and interface between the 1995 Constitution and this new Constitution, as well as a consequent shift to new ways of expressing individual voice and legitimacy within the party, will be challenging, especially relative to compromising our respective egos. But this much-desired transition certainly deserves our resilience, mutual respect, and mutual understanding. Ordinarily, every Israeli union has a right to be ambitious, but our individual ambitions to hold key positions in this party and in the country must not cloud out the overarching desire to hold the party and country together and make these responsive to fulfilling the needs of every Israeli union. And let us all remember that the solid foundation of our collective existence as APCMs is grounded in the power and strength of our indomitable grassroots, our ever energetic and vigilant youth and women, and the wisdom and experience of our age. During our respective campaigns, our people have had the opportunity to hear each one of us contestants. And here, I can hear them saying to us, enough is enough. Elections are over. And the book now stops with each and every one of us to heal and reconcile within us and between us in peace and in unity. We must now agree to die a little so that the APC party can survive and live to apply and secure more cohesive and peace-centered political social and development pathways once in governance. Considering where we have come from and where we are currently, as a country, 
that is characterized by prolonged macroeconomic imbalances, structural bottlenecks, abject poverty, and protracted mystery of our people, I have a vision, a vision that will seek to reunite and rebuild a country where every citizen, regardless of tribe, region, political, and religious affiliations, can live freely and able to enjoy their fair share of the fruits of national prosperity. We will achieve this vision by urgently retrofitting and transforming existing state institutions, by fighting corruption, by restoring justice and equity for all, and by building a shared future. For the first time in the history of Sierra Leone, a legally binding and longer-term transformative development plan will be articulated in consultations with all and sundry. This vision and plan will aim to guard against decades-long tendencies for successive governments to politically ignore, marginalize, and even abandon or reverse the gains made through previous development efforts. No doubt, systemic challenges for addressing the determinants for achieving sustainable economic growth, eliminating acute poverty, hunger, and food insecurity, for the slow pace of national road construction, for our weak electricity generation capacity, and dilapidated transmission and distribution networks for our poor water supply facilities and the poor and costly public health care. Our high level illiteracy, high level government corruption, the collapsed democratic rights, peace, unity, and justice for all. It is most worrisome to every Sierra Leonean that Despite our impressive resource base, Sierra Leone has almost invariably underperformed and remained ranked the lowest in the world in terms of the critical elements leading to good and national prosperity. These determinants, most especially infrastructure, business environment, and access to finance must always remain paramount in setting our development priorities. At the same time, we have an obligation to address very quickly those challenges which from time to time are caused or derived from the frailties of political regimes and which exponentially impact our livelihoods or even lead many of us to despair. These and many more societal challenges will be fully articulated in our forthcoming manifesto covering my economic, social, foreign, and domestic policies. My sweet and message here today, fellow citizens, is the urge for intra-party and national unity, peace, stability and prosperity. These are the necessary pillars if we are to take back and build toward an intergenerational accountable and self-fulfilling Sierra Leone. I therefore call on all fellow citizens to hold my future government accountable because I do believe in the bigger picture and the greater good of a united and prosperous Sierra Leone where every citizen can afford the basic necessities of life and have a right to challenge every government. Where our children can receive quality education, where we can access to affordable quality health care, justice, security, other public services, and where public institutions, including security, and elections-based institutions can function the way they should. 
we must create opportunities for everyone to succeed, not just for the few in power and governance and their cronies. Because a nation is only successful where development is invariably made inclusive and reaches the disadvantaged sectors and segments of his society. May the Almighty God bless Sierra Leone as we move forward to June 24, 2023. May the Bureau regime and all its attendant state-captured institutions provide us eligible voting citizens the opportunity to express our choice of political leadership in a free, fair, and non-violent elections environment. Without your dedication and support, we would not have been able to make the progress that we have made so far. On behalf of the entire flag bearer campaign team, particularly the Samura Kamara movement, and that of all other aspirants and contestants, on my own very personal behalf, I want to thank each and every one of you, including the delegates at the National Delegates Conference and lower level elections from the bottom of my heart for everything you have done for me. I thank you. God bless the All People's Congress Party. God bless the Republic of Sierra Leone.